Hello friends, I'm a Cloud Solutions Architect at Microsoft and my aim is to empower every single person to be better at technical interviews. Keeping with that goal in mind, today we are going to do a very interesting lead code problem called reverse nodes in a K group. If we see some of the popular companies who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Bloomberg, Google, TikTok, Facebook, ByteDance, Uber, Snapchat, Paytm and Tesla. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code hard problem and also a very well like problem on lead code. Basically we are given the head of a linked list and we are also given another value integer value called k. Now based on this given head of the linked list we need to reverse the nodes inside the given linked list k at a time and we need to return the modified list. There are also some additional parameters given which states that basically if we have the number of uh, nodes that are less than k we do not need to reverse them. Let's try to understand this with an example. If we see in this case we are given a linked list and we are given the value k is equal to 2. Now if we understand the problem statement basically we need to reverse the nodes inside this given linked list k times at a time. So in this case two nodes are given so we are going to reverse two nodes and then keep on repeating the same process. So the idea is first we are going to reverse these two nodes whatever the answer is we will store over here then we will reverse these two nodes and again we will store that answer over here and since this one is only one node and we are given the value k is equal to 2 we are not going to change anything over here. So if we see the answer in this case basically if we just reverse these two nodes uh, the reverse node is going to look like this 2 and 1. Then we have the nodes 3 and 4 which are the two next k nodes or next two nodes. So again we are going to reverse them and since this is only the single node we will not reverse them. So this is going to be the modified reverse list that we need to return as the answer. If we see basically we are reversing k nodes at a time and at any point we identify the nodes less than k we do not do anything. Now the most basic thing we can do to solve this problem is first of all we need to check for the hk scenario. The hk scenario is that if the given number of k is actually greater than the number of elements present inside our linked list if that is the case basically we don't need to modify the given input linked list and we can return the answer as it is. Now uh, why we can do it because the given k is equal to 6 and we are being asked to reverse k nodes but in this case since k is greater than the given number of nodes present there is no way for us to reverse all 6 nodes which means we don't need to modify the answer as uh, at all and we can simply return as it is. Let, now let's try to think about some logical scenarios. Suppose our given value is equal to k is equal to 2, 3 something like that. If that is the case what is the approach we will take? The approach is quite simple. First we will take these two nodes. We will do the reversing function. For all the remaining ones we will repeat the same process after we are done reversing these two elements. Which means first we will do a, like a reversing function and then for all the other nodes so currently this one would be pointing towards this 3. Now for this new newly created list we would be able to repeat the same process. If we repeat the same process now this time we will reverse these two nodes and again if we keep on repeating the same, same process we will only be left with just a single node which only contains one value which is again less than the value of k which means we don't need to uh, change this portion. If we see logically this becomes a very good candidate for a recursive approach. Why recursive approach? Because essentially every single time first of all we were considering all of these five nodes uh, to do like k equal to 2. Once we are done iterating these two nodes we can get rid of them and now our input shrinks to the three nodes and then again we will repeat the same process and then again if we get rid of these two nodes we only are left with just a single node and then we need to repeat the same process. Which means recursively this is going to be a very beautiful approach to solve this problem. Now we already know the overall framework on how to solve this one. But one key important piece of information missing is the reverse uh, function that we need to perform. In order to perform the proper reverse function first let's identify that what is the methodology we are going to use. Okay now let's try to figure out that if this is the given input linked list we are given we are simply trying to reverse this whole linked list. We are not con currently considering about the k values because we already know the solution. 
So if we want to reverse this entire linked list, what is the approach we can take? Well, let's try to see that what are things we have. We currently have a head pointer that points to the first value inside our linked list. Now, we, since we need to do the reverse linked list, basically the reverse linked list is going to have a new head and this would be the head of the reverse linked list. So we will also, first of all, we need to create a new node called new head and initially new head value is going to be null. So let's just create a new head. I'm going to mark it as NH and currently the value is null. Okay. We will also need to find some way to iterate over the given input existing linked list. For that, what we can do is we can create a pointer node and this pointer node, we are going to initially assign it to the value of the head pointer. And then we will use the pointer node towards to move or uh, towards the next values. So let's just create a new pointer node in this case. After creating these two values, we will need to at any given position, keep track of the next node because for the pointer node, we will need to iterate to the next element at the same time. Using the pointer node, we are going to manipulate the values of the new head variable because we are reversing the linked list. So we will need to create a new variable called next node. And initially the next node value currently is null. Just understand uh, for the sake of understanding that this is null. And now we don't need the head node. So after initial setup or initially setting up everything, let's see that what would be the approach to reverse the given linked list. Okay. Now, first thing we are going to do is since we need to keep track of the next node, we will first assign the value. So we will keep the next node to be the pointer dot next. Okay we set up the value of next node to be pointer dot next. So at this position, the next node is going to be here. Okay. Now we also need to keep track of the value of pointer dot next. But the thing is, since now we are trying to reverse the linked list, basically the pointer dot next is going to point towards the new head. So let's mark that. So pointer dot next should move towards the new head. Okay. So currently the new head value is null, the, keep it that way for now. Now we need to update the value of the new head. So for the new head is going to be the existing pointer we are at. So existing pointer currently is one. So in this case, the new head was going to be the value of one. Okay. So let's just mark this value. So new head is going to be the existing pointer value. And in the end, we need to move, move this pointer to the next element. How would we be able to do it? using this next node because we already updated the value of pointer dot next. So we will need to move for the pointer to the next value, which is going to be pointer is going to move to the next node. So n n and this using these steps, we would be able to reverse this linked list easily. So now after the first iteration, this is the current setup we have that new head is located at one. Currently the pointer is located over here. And new node is also here, but during the next iteration, the values will be updated. So now let's update the values again. So now, okay, new node becomes to the next value. So this is going to be our new node. Now at the same time, pointer dot next points to the new head. So currently this pointer two is pointing towards three with rather than pointing towards three. Now this two is pointing towards one. So we are going to have a configuration. So currently the new head value is one. And we are going to have two point to the one. This is the current logic we have. Okay. At the same time, new head is now going to move towards pointer, which means that rather than new head having the value of one, it is going to have the value of two. So let me write this in a little bit separate manner. So if I do that, basically currently the new head is going to be the pointer value and the pointer dot next, we already define it to be the previous new node, which is going to be one. Okay. So now this is the setup we have and also now pointer moves to the next node. So next node is three. So now pointer again moves to the next node. So pointer is here. Next node is here. Again, if we repeat the same iteration, basically the next node is going to be pointer dot next. So this is going to be the next node. Now pointer dot next is going to become the new head. So pointer dot next is currently pointing towards the uh, value number two. Uh, sorry, value number four, but rather than pointing towards value number four, pointer dot next is now going to point towards value number two. At the same time, new head is going to become pointer. So now let's just make this changes as well. Now, in the end, we simply need to move pointer to the next element. So now pointer will move to the next element. 
and in the end if we repeat the same process again basically the next node will end up at null and we will have the new head to be value number 4 and since the next node is null we cannot do anything so we can break out of the loop here and whatever the next head is we can simply return that but at the same time we reverse the given entire linked list and this solves mo the major concern of our pro problem so now we already know that how to reverse nodes okay so after understanding all the small pieces now let's see that what would be the optimal solution basically for the optimal solution we have two options first option is that we use the recursive function and then things becomes much easier for us basically we take these two elements we apply the recursive function where we basically reverse them and after reversing we update our value and again repeat the same process for these three remaining items again we reverse these two items and then we keep the last item and then basically using the recursion and the reverse function we would be able to solve this problem quite easily now for the recursive approach if we see time and space complexity basically the time complexity is going to be big of n because we need to iterate over the given input uh, twice why twice because first we need to check that whether for the given input if the given value of k is greater than or not or less than or not and then secondly we need to do it for the reversing the k nodes if we see space complexity the space complexity is going to be big o of 1 where uh, sorry big o of n where uh, we will use n space for the recursive stack so the next question your interviewer is going to ask you is that rather than using the big o of n space complexity can you solve this problem in big o of 1 space complexity so that is also very simple to do uh, basically all we need to do is that at any given position First, we will try to see that whether the given k elements exist or not. If they exist, then we will simply reverse them and we can simply use like couple of while loops and do this iteratively. And iterative, uh, the logic is going to remain the same. But first, we are only going to check that whether the number of k elements are present or not. If they are present, we are going to simply apply our reverse function and after keep on reversing the values, uh, eventually we would be able to find our answer as uh, needed and iteratively this is the answer we need to return if we see time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n and the space complexity is in this case is going to be big o of 1 now for the coding solution part of this particular reverse nodes and k group portion actually i made a blunder before i recorded the whole uh, video explaining the code but uh, i forgot to use my microphone and that's why i didn't record any any of the voice now i'm not going to do the whole thing again i'm i can just go through the code and then i'll post this code in the comments and also i can post this code in the github uh, repository that i have created and provide links for both of them so basically you would be able to see the code now in this particular solution basically we are using the iterative approach uh, by which we will have a better space complexity and uh, definitely we need to we need a way to reverse a linked list so i am creating a helper method that takes in any list node as an input and a k value and return the reverse linked list a uh, new head so this uh, these are all the steps that we discuss in the uh, explanation part of the video and we keep on repeating the same process and this is just a, just the helper method okay now let's move on to the main method now inside the main method First of all, we are defining a few of the variables that we need to keep track of different things. So basically we have a variable pointer to that will iterate over the given entire list. We are also keeping track of a k tail variable. And what this k tail variable does is that whenever we are done iterating like any set of k nodes uh, and we are planning to go to the next step. So if we see on the left side of the screen, suppose we have done iterating uh, uh, reversing this one and two node which means we still have nodes three four and five to process so k tail would be pointing towards this node number two and we would be able to do certain things with that uh, that we will see in next in the code now first of all we are going to initialize a while loop that while the pointer is not equal to null which means this is the loop that runs over uh, entire given linked list 
Now inside that, first of all, we have a counter and we also have pointer located at the head position. We first check that whether uh, the current count, if that is less than K, we will move the pointer towards the next element and keep on updating the value of K. And now we would be at the position if the count is equal to K, which means we are at the position where uh, currently we will need to reverse the, the nodes that are between those values. So say for an example, initially count would be zero at this value number one and count would be two at this value number two. And basically uh, we need to reverse like these two values. So we will use our reverse function. And after in uh, this condition is only there for the first case scenario, because if we see in the output, the head is always going to be the reverse portion of first K nodes, all the other K nodes doesn't matter. So that is why this is to define that what is going to be the new head value. And then this checks that whether the K tail, if that is not equal to null, if that is not equal to null, which means that the K tail val value is actually going to the, going to point to the new reverse node value. And that is why we are using the K tail variable. And in the end, we just update the K tail pointer and also the he head pointer and keep on iterating the while loop. So basically using the combination of these two, we are able to solve this problem. And in the end, we are simply returning the new head. So we will check that if the given new head is equal to null, if that this is the scenario, this will only happen if the given K is actually greater than the number of values present inside our uh, linked list. And in that case, we simply need to return the old head. And if the new head is not null, we need to return the new head value. And this is the whole solution. I hope the solution makes sense. And now let's try to run this code. So our solution seems to be working. Let's submit this code. And if we submit this code, our solution actually runs 100% faster than all the other solution. And that is because the runtime is actually zero millisecond. And uh, even if we see in terms of space complexity, this is really good. So this is a very good solution. Uh, again, I would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there or you can check it out from this GitHub.